What's going on guys? Ben Gligan here coming back at you with another video today. Another MLB The Show 18 franchise rebuild today. Rebuilding the Chicago White Sox. If you guys are new here, I would appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button for more videos like this. If you're looking for a super realistic video, it's not going to be that. Uh, I'm going to do what the game allows me to do. So, it's going to be a really fun one, I think. Stay tuned. So, when we look at the roster, uh, the best player is Jose Abreu. He's the best player in real life. Hasn't been in the MLB for all that long. Yeah, only since 2014. But he's been very, very good every year of his career. He is 31, unfortunately. We also have Wellington Castillo, Yohan Mancada, Avisel Garcia, Luis Avilan, uh, Nate Jones. It's a decent bullpen. I don't know why Nate Jones is playing a AAA, possibly injury. Turned injury off, finally, because uh, that really hinders development and, and screws up a season. Michael Kopech is a phenomenal guy to have. Uh, a lot of velocity there. Alec Hansen, also solid. And we should down the list have... Uh, oh, he's not even listed at top 50 prospects. He's with the MLB level. Lucas Giolito is a very, very intriguing player. A um, lot of really good prospects in this White Sox organization. Out of the pen, we have, of course, talked about it. Luis Avila, Nate Jones, Xavier Cedeno. Um... We're going to be looking to, trading, or looking to trade a lot of these players. I'm not really sure that there's one reliever I like in here uh, for the long term. Because, like, as far as Luis Avilan goes, potential is not high enough. Age is right there, though. I don't want to have a bullpen full of 30+. plus. I'd like to get a little bit younger. Closer, uh, Juan Manaya is interesting. 72 overall, B potential, 27. We'll see what happens with him. Of course, catcher, we have Wellington Castillo. And then in the minors... Um, Zach Collins is an intriguing player. Omar Narvaez is an intriguing player. It's about age and potential. Jose Abreu, of course, Casey Gillespie underneath. Gavin Sheets all the way down here with the B potential. Yohan Mankata underneath him. There's not really too much. Matt Davidson, who's been hitting for incredible power in real life. And then Jake Berger all the way down there. Shortstops, Tim Anderson could be very, very talented. Um, we have Jose Rondon in the minors. Left fielders, Lori Garcia is starting. Nicky Delmonico underneath him. Charlie Tilson in center. And we have Luis Robert, top 50 prospect, only 20, uh, 20 years old, A potential. And then Blake Rutherford, who the White Sox acquired in a trade with the Yankees to, uh, to uh, I forget what trade actually brought Blake Rutherford there. Who did the Yankees get? Oh, it was, it was Robertson and Canely. That was what it was. Right field, Avisel Garcia is a really good player. Uh, like him a lot. Wish his potential was higher. Maybe he gets it up to a B over the course of this thing. And then Eloy Jimenez, who was in that Quintana deal to send uh, Jose Quintana to the Cubs. White Sox got Eloy, who hits for tremendous power, very young as well. So we're going to be looking a lot to build through our farm system and get rid of the aging players. So as much as I like Jose Abreu, it probably means he's going to get traded. With this first trade, I am trading Jose Abreu as well as Wellington Castillo, two very talented players, and uh, Matt Skull down there near the bottom of our first baseman, 28, 54 overall, C potential. I'm out. For Brendan McKay, 22 years old from the Tampa Bay Rays, lefty, eventual probably power hitting, great fielding first baseman. Really like what he brings to the table, only 22 years of age. I'm going to make that first trade happen. So we're going to be giving away a lot of value here to start. Uh, in order to get younger and really build up this farm system. So it's going to be rough at first. First couple years are not going to be fun, but uh, I think it's going to work out in the long term when we actually have a really talented team. With this trade, making a trade with the Orioles for Cedric Mullins, a center fielder, B potential, 23 years old, trading much of the bullpen. I can always restock this uh, both through the draft and as well through free agency. Xavier Cedeno, Nate Jones, and Joaquim Soria are going to get the job done. Just aging relievers. Uh, still somewhat talented. Joaquim Soria used to be very good. Nate Jones, okay. Xavier Cedeno, okay. And I think Cedric Mullins is just preparing for the future. So I'm fine with making that trade. Going in a free agency, and I'm going to sign um, Henderson Alvarez to a two-year deal. Just have some filler players in there so my prospects aren't in right away. Uh, Michael Enoa is actually probably a pretty good deal regardless. Hold on. All right, he's 2.1 over 2. And then we'll do a Richard Newman as well. I think that's a pretty good deal. And I do want some relievers. I don't want to sign the same guys every time, though. 
Um, so let's try and Drew Storen. Wow, I just signed him to two a year. I, that's not, I can trade him. That's fine. Uh, I should have looked at that contract though. And you know what? I, I am going to sign Trevor Rosenthal. It makes sense too. I gotta really, I'm going to, oh God. All right, Trevor Rosenthal is in on a four-year deal. I'm going to try to make these a bit shorter. A lot of them have been super long. So that means cutting a lot out, which I think is going to be for the best. And I'm going to keep it on auto for the first year. I just don't want guys like... Well, I probably want Lucas Giolito starting. But I don't want Carson Fulmer in the pen. At all. All right, so our lineup is going to be this for the first season. And I don't expect this to be a very good team uh, at all. Yon Mankata is going to be all the way down the board. Just got to let that bat develop a little bit. He is going to be at the major league level. He's a very talented player. Um, so hopefully he just starts hitting the ball really well. It's going to be Tim Anderson leading off Omar Navar 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 Narvaez. Jeez, that's tough to say for some reason. Avisel Garcia, Matt Davidson, Cedric Mullins, Yon Mankata, Kevin Smith, Nicky Del Monaco, and then Lori Garcia. We, of course, are in the AL, which is the first AL team I've done. So... We get to deal with a DH, which is actually kind of cool. I don't mind that. So that's something we can plan for. So we can bring in, you know, multiple first basemen. Uh, and then our rotation is going to be Carlos Rodon, Henderson Alvarez, Michael Enoa, Miguel Gonzalez, and Ronaldo Lopez. Of course, later down the line, we're going to look to bring up guys, you know, like Lucas Giolito. Want to send him back down to the minors, get a little bit better first. Like Alec Hansen, Michael Kopech, Carson Fulmer. All those guys will eventually come up. But for now, we're not going to. So... First season's going to be a lot of simulating, um, so I'm going to, you know, figure out scouting, and then um, I am going to see you guys probably for the draft. All right, we have a lot of uh, a lot of money to spend maybe in free agency. Should be a fun one, but uh, yeah, I will pretty much just see you guys for draft day. So at the draft, we're 30 and 30, which is actually much better than I thought we'd be. We've had some stretches in here where we've won a lot of games. Uh, which uh, I don't really know how I, I don't want to do all that well. I'd like a higher draft pick next year But uh, yep, it is draft time And I think just for the sake of making these videos a little bit faster a little bit shorter for you guys to watch What I'm gonna do is just show you guys the first pick and that's it And this looks like a classic five tool player beast Eddie Farrell 20 years old out of California looks unbelievable you know, never going to be a great contact hitter, but power is off the charts. Fantastic fielder reaction with a cannon of an arm above average. Not a cannon, but, you know, pretty good arm. And then fantastic speed and stealing. So, Eddie Farrell is going to be the pick for me here at number four. And I will see you guys when we go over all the prospects drafted. So, our draft went, I would say, fairly well. Eddie Farrell is unbelievably good, and that mustache really speaks volumes about how talented he is. 20 years old, 94 potential, 66 overall. I mean, you can see with that speed and stealing. I mean, he looks like he's going to be a very good player one day for us, maybe. Jamal DeVore is good right now. He's a 68 overall, 72 potential. Catcher Sean Bermudez, 82 overall. Uh, excuse me, 82 potential, 57 overall. He's all right. Not really great arm for a catcher. Does he have any secondaries? He, okay, so the outfield. Julian Rivera, great speed and ceiling, just like Eddie Farrell. Um, 59 overall, can't really hit all that well. 73 potential. And then J.J. Slade is a pitcher. 67 overall, which is great. 81 potential, already has a you know an absolute cannon. 99 velocity, so that's pretty cool. And then Alberto Asensio is a 62 overall and is not very good. The potential. Overall, a decent draft class, nothing crazy. Yuan Moncada is getting upgraded a lot. He is skyrocketing. He's got to have, what, 99 potential? Something like that. 99 potential, of course. Uh, so, really loving what he's bringing to the table. A lot of these guys are playing up. Some of them playing down. Tim Anderson playing way up. Of course, with contact against lefties especially, is showing. Carlos Rodon's playing up. I like that. And his per nines haven't even been tested yet. Tested, that's not what I mean. Yeah, we're just working on his velocity and break right now. We're going to get to his per nines sooner. Why are these guys not training? Train, what are you doing? All right, but I guess um, I'm going to sign our draft picks, and then I will see you guys at the end of the season. I like how the CPU says that Brian Dozier's on the trade block. We should consider trading for him to improve that position. 
We have Johan Moncada, but all right. So this is the trade they would suggest for Andrew Benintendi. Tim Anderson, Carson Fulmer, and Blake Rutherford. Uh, yeah, no. All right, I don't know what's going on. Richard Newman has unreal value as a 26-year-old 26 26-year-old 26 D potential guy. He has unbelievable value. All right, so with this trade, I'm trading Henderson Alvarez, Nicky Delmonico, and Richard Newman for Nolan Arenado and uh, Kyle Freeland, who is a decent player as well. Welcome to the team. <laughs> what a ridiculous trade. <laughs> who the fuck even was that? Richard Newman. Why is his value almost two bars? I mean, if teams really like him, they really like him. There's nothing I can do about that, you know? I think it's a pretty good trade to get Nolan Arenado at the deadline. I'm a big fan of that. <laughs> oh, people are going to be mad. I, I, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. I'm just doing what's in the game. And with this trade, I'm trading for Josh Hader out of the bullpen and Domingo Santana from the Milwaukee Brewers. I am trading Tyler Danish. I'm trading Trevor Rosen, uh, Rosenthal, and I'm trading Michael Enoa. So we're giving away some decent value here, uh, but I think over the long term, we are getting better. Michael Enoa is not in my long-term plans at starting pitcher. We have a ton of value at that uh, that spot. And then Trevor Rosenthal blows them all. I'd rather have Josh Hader in the pen. I think Domingo Santana is a solid outfielder to get. At the worst, he's a solid DH for us. With this trade, I'm going to be trading Kyle Freeland, who we acquired from the Rockies, Casey Gillespie, and Ryan Brett. They're sending away. They're, I'm sending them to the St. Louis Cardinals for Carlos Martinez. Good starting pitcher. Not an ace yet. You know, I know there's a big debate. Is Carlos Martinez an ace? Is he not? Not yet, but he certainly has the potential to be. Only be potential in the game, and that's still decent enough potential. I'll take him, and he is an instant upgrade to our ace. So he jumps up to a 90 overall. I guess a lot of that might be morale. Is that morale that I'm seeing there? It is morale. He's usually at 86, but he's ecstatic with being an ace. And uh, also playing alongside uh, a couple members of the team and the, from the DR. So I don't, I don't mind that whatsoever. Let's go ahead and simulate two waiver trades. We ended up finishing 72 and 90. Um, so we will see what the stats were since we were in the last day of the season. So Domingo Santana, I guess, was our starting right fielder. He might have, he might have DH'd actually quite a bit. Let me see her lineup. No, obviously El Garcia DH'd a lot. That's odd. Um, looks like Carlos Martinez went down as well. Whatever, that's kind of weird. But as you can see from our player statistics, we were a team that hit a few home runs. Matt Davidson hit 28. He probably DH'd quite a bit as well. 27 for Nolan Arenado, 31 from Domingo Santana led the team. Yohan Moncada hit 20. He's up to an 87. His potential is going down, though. Why? He's playing up so high. That's awesome to see. Tim Anderson hit only 12, was, was next best on our team. Uh, RBIs were led by Domingo Santana with 92. 82 for Aviciel Garcia and 81 for Nolan Arenado. Stolen bases, 25 from Cedric Mullins, who I guess... I guess moved up to starting in center. He uh, is 76 overall. Average was 289 from Arenado, 277 from Avicel Garcia, uh, 274 for Yohan Moncada. Actually, a great average from him. Cedric Mullins at 267. We're like a pretty much 260 and up team. Tim Anderson needs to be way better than 256 as my leadoff. That's ridiculous. Uh, on base percentage, Yohan Moncada, really? That surprises me. As a uh, Avicel. Obviously, obviously, I usually just call him Avisail, but now it's Avisail. Garcia, letter team and slugging. Yamakata, really for OPS? That's crazy. He also struck out 159 times. Gotta get that vision up. Uh, as far as pitchers go, 194 strikeouts from Carlos Martinez is great. 165 from Carlos Rodon is okay. ERA, uh, 297 from Carlos Martinez is fantastic. Uh, out of the bullpen. Let's see here. Josh Hader. I would hope your ERA. 403. Too high. A little bit odd. But uh, let's go ahead and simulate to the offseason and uh, really get this going. We have some money to spend in free agency as the Indians have defeated the Nationals in the 2018 World Series. 
and it is off season time don't really want to bring back hector santiago but i do need to sign a first base coach i'm also gonna fire my hitting coach minus two to power i'm not about that um i'm okay with taking a hit there you're a terrible pitching coach why you don't you are the worst you can stay minus one of feeling that's kind of whatever and my manager rick renteria he's okay i guess but i gotta, I gotta sign a bunch of a bunch of guys there's some really good free agents as well uh as i've done a lot of tendering contracts and whatnot for non-arbitration eligible players brian dozier's here paul goldschmidt intrigues me at first base uh they're getting real long-term deals so josh donaldson someone that could play first for us as well I would probably prefer Paul Goldschmidt, if I'm being honest, even though his potential is going down. He is younger, only 31, to Josh Donaldson's 33. Manny Machado is certainly an interesting player. Can play a number of different positions for us. I might offer on Manny Machado. So we actually brought in Sean Doolittle. Pretty big deal for him. And then I have to, uh, I have to deal with Eloy Jimenez, who's being a pain in the ass. Dallas Keuchel to the Nationals. I think I'm going to skip all this unless we sign anybody. And we signed Manny Machado to a gigantic deal. He had a sixth season last year. All right. Eloy Jimenez is the worst. All right. I cannot bring him back. He declines every offer I make. All right. We got him back. Um, I might even offer on some. I have offered on some of these guys. So, I mean, when there are talented players in the Rule 5 draft, I might as well take him. Zach Rand is a player I could see being on my roster. I don't really need, even though he's a top 50 prospect, I don't really need another pitcher. So I'm going to draft Zach Rannett here in the Rule 5. And then maybe come around if he's still available. Um, he still is. The problem is he'd be a waste of a spot considering he's a pitcher. 26. He's only 23, man. Nah, nah, nah. We're fine at pitcher. All right. Season number two. Nolan Arenado's up to a 97. We brought in Manny Machado. Uh, that was a gigantic move. Sean Doolittle as well to be our closer. We're going to go position by position. So as far as starters go, we're looking really, really solid. Of course, Carlos Martinez. We have Carlos Rodon. We're going to be a big Carlos team, I think. Even Reynaldo Lopez is a great pitcher to have. Lucas Giolito is up at the MLB level now. He is looking okay besides K per nine. Carson Fulmer is a decent option. And of course, Alec Hansen, Michael Kolpak will come up eventually. For now, we're going to see what these guys can do. And, you know, I think Reynaldo Lopez might eventually end up being the odd man out. He might be more trade value than it's worth to keep him. When we have guys like Alec Hansen, Michael Kolpak coming up, maybe even Carson Fulmer. Because I can guarantee you guys that, like, at least... Two of these pitchers that we're seeing here, uh, out of Alec Hansen, Michael Kopech, Carson Fulmer, Ronaldo Lopez, G Lucas Chilito, all these guys, even Carlos Rodon. One or two of these guys is not going to be on the team at the end of this thing. I, we're, I think we're going to have to trade one of them. Of course, we see J.J. Slade, who we drafted, who uh, honestly could make a move to the bullpen for us. 66 stamina. He could be just a great middle reliever option if we get his per nines up. And um, relievers are looking really, really solid. Josh Hader, of course, is a beast. Luis Avilan is solid. Bruce Rondon, solid. He actually is up to an 82. Jeez, Gregory Infante, solid enough. We need to get more depth in here for sure. Um, Juan Manaya is a really solid option as well. He's going to be in the bullpen. And Sean Doolittle is our closer. Catchers, Omar Narvaez is playing up. We drafted Sean Bermudez. Bermudez needs to uh, be better than he is because right now he's terrible. Brennan McKay will eventually be our starting first baseman, I would guess. Um, right now, I think... I don't know who's going to play first base. Kevin I Sheets is an interesting option. Yohan Moncada is, of course, going to start at second base. Nolan Arenado will be our starting third baseman. Matt Davidson likely uh, will be either a bench bat or on the trade block. And then at shortstop, we have an interesting kind of power struggle Manny Machado and Tim Anderson now Manny Machado can play first third and short so it makes sense oh we'll play Manny Machado at first base I don't really know about that because he's such an incredible fielder with a cannon of an arm it makes no sense to really do that Tim Anderson 
Can't play first base. So what it looks like we might do is move Nolan Arenado to first base. And he is a tremendous fielder as well. I think uh, Manny Machado has more value at third. Or even Tim Anderson has more value at third. Manny Machado is going to play third base, even though he doesn't want to in real life. It's not your fucking choice in the game, Manny. You are playing third base. Nolan Arenado uh, is going to play first. It just, I think it's the best possible option for him. So we are going to move him to first. He will be our starting first baseman. And then Manny Machado will get the look at third base. And then we'll change his secondaries to uh, infield. Second short. Where's third short? Or We'll do second short. So he will play third base. And he is the new highest overall player on our team. Let's see here. So the infield is set. I think Tim Anderson's going to be good. We just have to, you know, kind of wait him out. Uh, maybe we'll trade even Brendan McKay at this point. Um, and then the outfield, it's a little bit different. Lori Garcia, he's obviously not my long-term option there. Cedric Mullins, but then even below him, we have Eddie Farrell, Luis Robert, Zach Granite, who we've traded for. Picked him up in the Rule 5 draft. Eloy Jimenez, Domingo Santana, Abisail Garcia. One of these guys is going to start in left. And that is going to be uh, certainly Domingo Santana. As we're going to change his primary to left field. As he's going to slide very nicely in there. Up to an 87 overall with that adjustment. He can already hit really well. And we're going to change some positions around it here. Luis Robert is a pure center fielder. Uh, I think Eddie Farrell could potentially move to left and be solid. We already have a right fielder in Eloy Jimenez. He's pretty much looks better as a left fielder. So, okay, let me go ahead and make a change. All right, and now I think I'm going to uh, try and make some trades, clear out some of these players like Charlie Tilson, who has some value. Maybe Adam Engel leaves as well. I don't know. And I'm going to be accepting this trade. Carl Edwards Jr., BJ Upton, Ryan Williams... Um, for Charlie Tilson, Adam Engel, and Matt Davidson. I think that makes uh, a pretty good trade for us. And what I'm going to do is likely, now that we have Carl Edwards Jr., I'm going to look to trade Melvin Upton because we don't really need him. And uh, center field is looking really, really good. Right field is looking fine. Left field is looking fine. What else do I want to trade? TJ House, definitely. There's no room for you on the roster. And it sucks for him, but uh, Upton is getting cut. Not edited. He's getting straight up cut. Don't want him. And he is going to be released. So here is the lineup versus uh, right-handed pitching for season number two. Cedric Mullins is going to lead off. I don't know how much I like that. He's a switch hitter leading off. You know, I'm kind of behind him. So we get basically at the top of the order guys that just straight up can't hit. So that's not going to happen. <laughs> Yohan Moncada can bat in the two-hole. That's fine. Arenado Machado. Um, no, let's let's not do that either. Let's go Manny Machado two. Moncada five. Ooh, that's that's bad. Um, Domingo Santana in the cleanup hole. I like. Let's do that. Tim Anderson's a great eight hitter at this point. No, yep, yeah, Mancata, Mancata's going to bat fifth. In that particular lineup. And the other one, we'll keep it the way it was. See how that plays out. But I will see you guys for the draft again. So we pick eighth in the draft. We're going to simulate there. And as per usual, I'll show you guys the pick. And then uh, and then we're going to show you afterwards. Me, I think Edmundo Ramirez, 50 overall. So he's trash right now. Blue chip player, 80 potential. 22 out of the Dominican Republic. Hopefully he progresses really quickly. Looks to be just a solid, well-rounded catcher. So uh, I, don't, I don't mind taking him. All right, draft pick time. Here we go. Uh, Edmundo Ramirez, 91 potential. Patrick Chavez, 72 overall C potential. Edmundo Ramirez at 48. He's not he's not where we want him to be. 58 overall for Garrett Adler, a starting pitcher. Uh, 85 potential on him as well. 60 overall, 72 potential for Leonard Hill. And then Ian Greenberg, only 62 potential. 
He's already a 74 overall out of Germany. Interesting. So he's a good overall already as a 20-year-old. But he's probably going to stay at that overall forever. So the Phillies are offering me a straight-up trade here. Jorge Alfaro for Brennan McKay. And I think I'm going to accept. Brennan McKay is good. Jorge Alfaro is better right now. He also is a catcher. So immediately more value. I think I'm going to accept this. So we actually won our division. We went 85 and 77. I don't know how we won the division. But we've made the playoffs here in year two. Let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, the team. So overall seem to be about the same. We're going to go you know, position by position. Carlos Martinez is still at an 86. Radon is going up. He's up to an 88. Ronaldo Lopez up to an 82. Lucas Giolito is playing up to a 76. Potential is going down. What the, the hell? All right. I don't like that very much. Relief pitchers hater is going up. Carl Edwards Jr. is about the same. I think a lot of that comes down to morale. Sean Doolittle is going up. He's up to a 92. Juan Manaya is going up as well. Catchers. Um, I still have Omar Narvaez. I traded for Jorge Alfaro. He is likely doing a lot of DHing right now. And uh, yes, he absolutely is. Um, but he's playing way up as well. He's improving at a very fast rate. So we might look to trade Omar Narvaez in some fashion next year. Nolan Arenado is uh, going down a little bit. I guess he doesn't like his new position at first base. That's tough because that's what you're going to play. Yohan Mankata going up. Continues to hit better, I guess. Like that. Manny Machado uh, stays about the same. Tim Anderson up to an 84. Domingo Santana down to an 85. Unfortunate. He's playing way down. That sucks. Cedric Mullins up to a 79. Also, like, why are you guys both at the AAA level? Why would that be effective? I guess maybe, like, I don't know. Both of you won't be playing. I don't know why the CPU did that. And Avisil, Avisil, Avisil Garcia. I just got to say it like a white fella. He, uh, he stays at an 82. You're down to an 82. Eloy Man is up to a 70 like to see him continue to improve um lineup's doing all right we got of, of course you know some changes going on as uh, i guess we have um where's my other catcher hold on here maybe it's a uh oh, Martin, he's on the bench here maybe he goes against lefties with a dh yeah there he is that makes no sense how do you hit? How do you both hit the opposite side better? I don't know. Let's check out awards. Manny Machado and Nolan Arenado both won gold gloves. I'll take that. We'll check out these stats before we go to the postseason. So, 30 home runs from Machado led our team. Also had 24 from Tim Anderson, Nolan Arenado, and Domingo Santana. As Jorge Alfaro hit 20. Yohan Mankata only had 14, uh, where he had like 20 last year. Stolen bases, 14 from Cedric Mullins. Led the team again. RBIs, Machado, 95. Arenado, 90. Garcia, 85. Average, Manny Machado was the only guy over 300. He hit 303. 287 for Arenado. 286 for Zach Granite. He actually played a lot more than I thought he would. 285 for Avisail Garcia. Averages overall were not that good. As far as pitching goes, uh, not a terrible season for Lucas Giolito. We need our pitchers to be a bit better overall. Carson Fulmer was dog shit, 2-15. The record does show, though, because he had a 6-3-8 ERA, which is uh, not good. As far as our relief pitchers go, uh, Hayter was excellent this year, improved a lot. Bullpen overall was pretty solid. 44 saves for Josh Hayter, who I guess is... Is he our closer? <laughs> Sean Doolittle, not our closer, even though he's our closer. Makes no sense. He had five saves. Uh, he had a really good season, too. Juan Manaya was solid as well. See, if you go to my rotation here... Oh, yeah, they've changed Josh Hader to our closer. No. No, no, no. Let's go ahead and uh, advance through the postseason. See what we do here. So, uh, we got smashed by the Astros. Smashed. That'll do it. Yankees defeat the Dodgers in the 2019 World Series. And uh, we are ready for the offseason. Retired players, you know, don't really matter. Adrian Beltre, Albert Pujols make the Hall of Fame. 
And we need a new farm director. Alright, coaches are pretty set. I don't really care about anyone in the Rule 5 draft. Uh, do have to tender some contracts, though, for sure. In free agency, no one is really that appealing to me. I guess I'd mainly be looking at the bullpen. So, really would like a lefty. So, maybe Tony Watson. So, the catcher we got, he's a top 50 prospect, Edmundo Ramirez. He's literal dog shit. He's awful. So, he'll need to improve quite a bit. Um, let's see, Yohan Mankata is playing well. Or, uh, not well, but I mean, like, he's up to an 89 overall. Manny Machado. Who do we even draft? I always forget these names. Left field. Is that Granite is going to be on the trade block? We drafted Jamal DeVore, maybe? I think we did at some point, for sure. Um, if we didn't, we traded for him. I think we drafted him, though. Center field continues to be an interesting spot with Eddie Farrell and now Luis Robert. Both getting better. I think Eddie Farrell would be better off in left field. Absolutely, he would be. So, with his noodle arm, he's going to play left field. He's a little bit better in left field. 70 overall. So, Zach Granite is going to get traded. I'll tell you that much right now. With this trade, I'm trading Zach Granite, Omar Narvaez, and Zach Collins to the Orioles for Starling Marte. He's an older player. Not really. He's only 31. Uh, doesn't hit particularly well, but he's a really, really good all-around center fielder. Uh, an upgrade over Cedric Mullins for sure, even though he's much younger. So what I can do now is probably keep Starling Marte and trade Cedric Mullins, who's going to have some decent value. And I'd hold on to Luis Robert. He's got to improve or something's got to happen to him, I guess. With this trade, I am trading Alec Hansen. So obviously a really good uh, pitcher in our farm system. I'm trading also Carson Fulmer. Kind of falls under the same category. He's getting 26 now, and he's a 70 overall. We're never going to use him realistically. And, of course, Cedric Mullins is also on the move for Garrett Cole. Pitching lights out in real life. Just got to get his per nines up in the game. Hit per nine, K per nine. He's going to be awesome. And he is our new ace-ish. Carlos Rodon, Garrett Cole, Carlos Martinez, Reynaldo Lopez, and then we have Lucas Giolito. Still with Michael Kopech coming up. J.J. Slade, who we drafted. I mean, we have not gotten worse at all with that trade, obviously. I mean, I don't need to tell you guys that. You guys are sharp, I would hope. Garrett Cole, just got to continue to work on him. What is your potential? 93. Not too bad. All right, so this will be the team for season number three. You guys can see all the players. Carlos Martinez has emerged as our highest overall somehow. Uh, that was a curveball. Haha, <laughs> baseball joke. What? That's hilarious. Relief pitcher. Um... I mean, we need to get better at this position. The potential is not there. We're all right, but this is not where I want the pen to be. Sean Doolittle's great. Juan Manaya, great. And then, of course, Jorge Alfaro is our starting catcher. Nolan Arenado at first base. He continues to get worse. That's upsetting. Yohan Moncada continues to get better. Manny Machado at third base. Shortstop is Tim Anderson. He needs to keep improving. Domingo Santana in left with Eddie Farrell coming up. Uh, I don't know why he's with the MLB team. Absolutely not. Jamal DeVore, uh, I guess he can play left. He's awful. In center field, we have Starling Marte starting. Luis Robert still working in the pen, or not the pen, in the farm system. Uh, he's with the MLB team. Again, who's making these decisions? No, he's not. He's going to be starting in AAA. Right field, Eloy Jimenez. Is he ready for the MLB? You know, probably. We're going to play him another year in AAA. And uh, see how that goes. Lineups and pitching rotation continue to be on auto. This is the team that we're going to be rocking with for the most part. Uh, it's a pretty good team. Right-handed dominant. Wow, there are a lot of right-handed batters on that team. It is what it is. Regular season time. And uh, just kidding, I'll see you for the draft time. Wow, what a win streak that was. We are winning quite a few games. Oh no, that was a lot of losses in a row. And Avisail Garcia broke his ankle. We're going to stop simulating. And uh, Eloy, it's your time to shine. He's back to the MLB level. They already know. Eloy, starting in right field. That should be fun. All right, we've been losing a lot of games since we last checked in. We're 30 and 32 now. It is time for the draft, and we will go to that. And per usual, I'll show you guys the first pick and then uh, show you the full draft. That was Jason Keys, by the way. 
Uh, I, I didn't verbalize that well. All right, time to see how well we did. Interesting. All right. Uh, Jason Keys is a 65 overall, 81 potential. 70 overall, 81 potential for Paul Hackman. He looks like a really solid player. That's clearly Jose Barrios. Why is Paul Hackman Jose Barrios? I have no idea. Whatever. We have Jose Barrios in spirit. Juan Moda is a 70 overall, talented player, only 67 potential. Dino Perez, 80 potential, 65 overall. 66 overall, 79 potential. Decent player in Brian Aviles. And then Chris Gooden, 69 overall, 71 potential. Still don't know why Paul Hackman is Jose Barrios. It's the strangest thing. I'm going to make this trade to acquire Chris Owings. Giving up Zach Birdie, uh, who is, is talented. But, I mean, most of our bullpen is. I would I would rather have Zach Birdie than Robbie Ross though. So if I could if I could edit this, that'd be great. Can I edit this? I'm just gonna just straight up decline then. Actually, so I guess at some point Luke, uh, Lucas Giolito got sent down for Michael Kopech, who is up now, and he's better than Lucas Giolito. So do we trade Lucas Giolito? That's an interesting one. All right, with this trade, I am trading Lucas Giolito, Avisel Garcia, and Blake Rutherford. So a very good haul, but I am acquiring Mookie Betts and also Bradley Lamb. But Mookie Betts is the newest member of the Chicago White Sox. What a player to get. Fantastic addition to the team. I think a quite significant upgrade over, uh, over Avisel Garcia. And then when we trade away Lucas Giolito, we're not giving up much. Uh, I mean, we are. But we have Michael Kopech. We have our starting five pitchers solidified for the course of this thing with Kopech now. And, you know, we have some solid pitchers. It's not a fantastic farm system behind him, uh, but it doesn't matter because we have young, solid starting pitchers. Our bullpen, for the most part, is solid. And, of course, Avicel Garcia is good. See potential. He wasn't really getting much better, unfortunately. Who is making these roster decisions? Why is Juan Manayo not with the MLB? Like, these are terrible decisions. Um, so, in right field, it's Mookie, center, Starling Marte, Domingo Santana. I mean, this is a really good-looking team. Hopefully, we can make a playoff push. We're about even right now, which unbelievably leads the AL Central. That, that really is unbelievable. All right, so it's a trade deadline. We're 57 and 52. Should still be leading the division, and we are. Indians don't even really stand a chance. It's a trade deadline. We're going to see what we can do. All right, so we finished. Wow, 84 and 78. We didn't make the postseason. I know that's a dog shit record. What happened? Oh my goodness. The Indians came on strong at the end of the season to pass us. Okay, I fucking hate the guy that we keep speaking. They came on strong somehow at the end of the season. They had a really, really good August. One, two three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They only dropped nine games in August. Where uh, we in August dropped... It looks like it looks to be pretty similar. That's three, that's six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. We dropped 13, and that had a, overall a pretty bad start to September as well. So we missed the playoffs here in Season 3. We're just going to go straight to the offseason. Dodgers defeat the Indians in the 2020 World Series. So the Indians made it to the World Series... I'm surprised they're doing as poorly as they've been. So, of course, got to get Mookie Betts back. We traded for him. He's a star player for us. And uh, we're in the market for a new manager. So, there are some decent free agents available, obviously. Uh, we really can't afford any of them, but, of course, Clayton Kershaw, Mike Trout. There are some really, really, really good players here. Arguably the two best players in the entire MLB. And also Mike Trout. Of course, I was talking about Ioannis Cespedes, who's totally not hitting like 120 right now. This is the team for season number four. Uh, and it looks just overall really, really good. I thought I saw the hitting and I'm like, is that Juan Moncada? No, I didn't, I didn't scroll down when I thought I did. Uh, he's getting better at least, but he's still not to where we want him to be. Uh, the team is pretty disgusting. Rotation improving. JJ Slade is getting much better. Relief pitchers. I mean, Josh Hader's unstoppable. And then we have solid closers. Closer. I mean, Juan Manaya is still listed as closer because I didn't change him. But he's, you know, solid relief, solid setup, man. 
Um, I'm going to look to trade Edmundo Ramirez since this might be the final season. And then one Moda who we picked. I mean, he's going to be a solid player. He's just, he's, he can hit really well. Just D potential at 24. Arnado sick. Makata, sick. Machado, sick. Tim Anderson. I might trade for a shortstop, man. Might as well. Uh, Tim Anderson has not improved over the course of this thing. Uh, Eddie Farrell looks like a monster still, but I mean, I don't know where I'm going to play him. Jamal DeVore is really solid as well. But like, this isn't like my Braves franchise series where these guys are going to be impact players. It's really, we've just developed them over the course of this thing. None of these guys have started. And like, even Eloy Jimenez, like, he's never going to be good enough to start, uh, you know, over the course of this thing. I'm not going to trade them though. But I might look to trade some of this left field action going on. Not Eddie Farrell, but Jamal DeVore. I could use I could use a better shortstop. Tim Anderson's got tons of value. Alright, with this trade, it's a blockbuster trade. Uh, trading a lot of value. I thought I was going to hang on to these players, but Eddie Farrell is going. He's never going to play over Domingo Santana. Uh, we're keeping Luis Robert, but we are trading Eloy Jimenez. He's never going to play over Mookie. And I don't really see a lot of space in the outfield. So... Trading Tim Anderson as well, uh, Eloy Jimenez, and Eddie Farrell. However, we're getting some tremendous value in return. At third base, bringing in Jose Ramirez. He's going to be a bench bat, and he's going to be a fantastic bench bat. Switch hitting third baseman. And we're bringing in Francisco Lindor. Arguably the best shortstop in the MLB. You could say Carlos Correa. You could say Corey Seager. You could even say Manny Machado, who we already have. Francisco Lindor, certainly right up there. Another switch hitter. Welcome to the team. So, of course, an interdivisional trade, whatever. Francisco Lindor is an absolute monster. I think part of the series is about making some blockbuster trades for the fun of it. And, um, I mean, we're looking really, really good. Could do with a, a better catcher, maybe, over Jorge Alfaro, who's, like, solid defensively, but... He's not that great in the game at, at smacking bombs, which is what I want. Yeah, it's just really hard to get a, a better catcher than uh, Jorge Alfaro, uh, considering what I'd be willing to trade. I like the bullpen where it is. I'm not trying to trade anybody really from there. Don't have a ton of value with their starting pitchers. Why are, are you at the MLB level? You should never be. TJ House, what are you doing? The nerve. If they come up to the MLB team. All right, I've actually managed to do it. It's a, it's a really big trade. Um, I'm trading for Francisco Mejia of the Indians, another trade with the Indians. Honestly, we're taking out our competition. We're trading them uh, Jorge Alfaro, trading them JJ Slade, his draft pick, and I am actually trading Starling Marte, who is a huge loss. I could trade... I couldn't trade Luis Robert, actually. It has to be Starling Marte. I think getting an upgraded catcher is that important. And also, I want to see what Luis Robert can do uh, in the starting lineup, so he's probably going to bat last. But, you know, he's one of the fun prospects on this team that we have remaining. So I want to get him some action. He's going to start in center. Got to have fun with these. Definitely have to. Uh, it's kind of a bummer that uh, we gave up a lot of value there. But at the same time, look what the team is now. Look what the team is. Lori Garcia is not our starting center fielder. What a ridiculous notion. There's not even, no way. It's going to be Luis Robert. Now, he can't hit for shit. That's that's the main problem with him. He can't hit uh, yet. But he is going to be our everyday starting center fielder. He just is. we got to improve him somehow. Jamal DeVore can start versus lefties. That's fine. Um, but versus righties, we're going to see Luis Robert. I'm in. I like it. Let's go ahead. The draft day is irrelevant because we're not really going to do a next season. Um, so I will see you guys at the end of this season. Yeah, it's a team that wins. This is a team that wins a lot. This is a team that just well, lost three in a row. What the f four? Wow, what did, I, what did I say? I take it back. We lose a lot. So I'm not saying these games are coming down. And the Indians are performing well, by the way. Not saying a lot of these games are coming down to, uh, Luis Robert. Being out there, but he hits less well than Starling Marte for sure. Um, 
And, I mean, it's notable that we are six and a half games out of first place. I guess we're going to go to a fifth season. We're 69 and 68. We're just not really performing as well as I want us to, obviously. Um, we got to start winning, man. 82 and 80, just finish above 500. Didn't make the postseason. Uh, we're right there fighting for it, though. 11 games back. The Indians went off. Dude, we didn't make the Indians better. There's no way. We took their good players. This team just... The Indians won the World Series. Oh, wow. You know what we need is a uh, an opportunity to have our players mesh together. That's all we need. We, they just need to mesh better. Obviously, some really good players here in free agency. Can't afford it. Just can't afford any free agent. There's not really a point to go in there. As we're going to skip all that. We're also going to take Blake Rutherford back in the Rule 5 draft. It's not a, bl a bad player to have on our team. He's almost up to a 70 overall. He'll be a decent player to have. All right, so this is the team for what should be the final season. Some players are continuing to get better. Uh, other players, certainly not so much. What we need, really, is Luis Robert. And his contact's going up. He is. He's getting better. And he's even playing with upgrades. We need Luis Robert to turn into a beast. That's the way this works. Outfield looks solid. Infield, obviously, is solid. I would say the best in baseball. How could it not be? Including Francisco Mejia. Wow, that's how. The Indians got Salvador Perez. How the fuck did they do that? Um, I feel like Sean Doolittle is ass now. Wamanaya, I guess there's a new closer. Our bullpen could be better. And I feel like our starting pitching is fine. I might try and trade some of these players. JJ, did we draft him? We may have. I might try to trade some players for bullpen. For right, this trade, I am trading for Emilio Pagan. It's going to be Ryan Williams in left field, Lori Garcia, and in center field, Luis Alexander Basabe. All right, Luis Alexander. So we've improved. I could even trade Blake Rutherford. He is. When did Blake Rutherford turn black? Now, I'm not even being funny here. He's not. He's, he's not. I'm telling you. I've been thrown for a loop here. He's certainly not. All right. Now, <laughs> and now he's, I don't know what's going on. All right. This trade needs to happen. Blake Rutherford, Paul Hackman, and Edmundo Ramirez, the catcher we drafted, straight up for Klubot. We're giving them nothing, and we're taking their best player. Welcome to the team, Corey Kluber. I've done a lot of interdivisional trading. Uh, Kluber should have some decent value as well. That's Josh Hader. Kluber has some value. I don't want to trade Corey Kluber. I, I want to trade Carlos Rodon. I'm going to make this trade. It's going to be Sean Bermudez. It's going to be Sean Doolittle. And it's going to be Carlos Rodon. We're going to go with Michael Kopech instead. For Yuana Cespedes, he is at worst an amazing bench bat. He'll DH probably a lot. Um, so we have improved in the outfield yet again. Will he be our starting left fielder? Uh, yeah, actually, he will be. Domingo Santana can DH quite a bit. I still want Luis Robert to be out there. I do. All right, this is going to be the rotation. Garrett Cole, Corey Kluber, Carlos Martinez, Reynaldo Lopez, and then Michael Kopech. Lineup, for the most part, is going to be uh, Francisco Lindor at short, Jose Ramirez DHing, Mookie Betts in right, Yoenis Espet is cleaning up in left field, Nolan Arenado at first, Manny Machado at third. This is a really good hitting team that can also defend really well. I like that. Domingo Santana in center. It seems like a disaster. I would rather have Yoenis Cespedes in center. Domingo Santana in center seems like an absolute disaster. Francisco Mejia, a catcher, and then Yohan Mancada at number <laughs> batting ninth. Luis Robert can't really hit. Is I think what the real problem comes down to. Um, wow, we're in a predicament. I'm going to say I would... Uh, <laughs> all right. So I almost feel like Domingo Santana is the odd man out, but he's not going to have trade value. I really like... I want to trade for Andrew Miller because this has popped up for Domingo Santana, Jose Rondon, and Bradley Lamb. I want to stop the... I mean, I've already traded a lot interdivisionally. 
And I guess taking their best reliever would be probably pretty good. I mean, realistically, he's the best option to get. Dude, I have to. I have to. Domingo Santana, Jose Rondon, Bradley Lamb for Andrew Miller. And uh, we've improved our bullpen even more. If you can see, it's disgusting. I guess our closer is going to be... Um, our closer... Can I... I'm on the Jays now. My closer is going to be Josh Hader, I guess. And we have Andrew Miller, who will be set up. We have a really solid bullpen. We just got to capitalize now and win. This team can get it done. This time, I'm going to simulate draft day. This has got to be a playoff team. It has to be. All right, we have finished 95 and 67, winning the division. And of course, it is going to be the Astros in the divisional yet again. We are back. Corey Kluber is down to, look like an 86 there. He's down to a 91. What is his morale like? It can't be very good. He's not, it's great. He's, he's at an 86 playing up to a 91. Who's angry here? It says somebody's angry. Oh, that's a starting pitcher. Nah, tr fuck Travis. Yohan Mankata. He doesn't like his team role. Be a star, like, I don't know, be your own star. I don't know, fucking, you play every day. I mean, it's your, your own fault if you're not playing to be a star player. I don't know. Let's check out the statistic. Let's check out awards first. Um, Manny Machado won a gold glove. Corey Kluber won the AL Cy Young. All right. Like to see that. Statistics, we're a team that hit a few amount of home runs. 37 for Machado, 31 for Cespedes, 29 for Nolan Arenado. Who was a little bit disappointing in this uh, rebuild. 25 for Francisco Lindor, Jose Ramirez, and Mookie Betts. 23 for Yohan Mankata. 22 for Luis Robert. Only 12 for Francisco Mejia. 102 RBIs for Machado. Led the team. Stolen bases. 30 for Mookie Betts. 20 for Lindor. Only one hitter above 300. It was Mookie Betts. 299, though, for Machado. 294 for Mejia. 290 for Lindor. 283 for Mankata. Everyone hit really well, except for Cespedes. Uh, but he hit... 31 home runs, so that's, you know, somewhat acceptable. 260 for Luis Robert. I mean, he actually had a really, really solid season. He's playing way up. He's up to an 83. All it took was starting him, I guess. As far as pitchers go, um, 212 strikeouts for Kluber, 210 for Garrett Cole. Struck out a lot. ERA uh, was a little bit high for some of these players. Like, you'd expect Corey Kluber's ERA to be a bit lower than 341. Like, Based on these numbers, how does Garrett Cole not win the Cy Young? His record was much worse, but he pitched far better in more innings, walked fewer, struck out only two less, ERA was much less, whip was much less. It has really come down to win percentage, because that's terrible. Relief pitchers, Josh Hader had 45 saves, struck out 59 and 51. Aaron Bummer pitched 133 innings. I think that's part of the problem. Hold on. I didn't even, I thought it was just like pick the best. So I think we really have to like auto put players in these uh, set spots. So if Juan Mania was there over Bummer, who is terrible, maybe we win a lot more games. This is something I know now. And uh, we'll, you know, take that with us into the next rebuild. See if we can go ahead and, and beat the Astros. Go up two. And we've beaten the Astros. And now we're going to take on the Yankees. In the ALCS. Simulate through two. A win and a win. And a win. Alright, one game away. A loss. A win. And the White Sox have beaten the New York Yankees. Winning the, uh, winning the ALCS. And we'll be taking on either the Dodgers or the Cubs in the World Series. And it will be the Dodgers. This should be a very interesting one. Let's simulate the first two. A win and a loss. We split games. Lose the next one. Win the next one. Two and two. Of course, first to four. We win the next one. And we're going to go ahead and go into the quick mana. So if we win, we can see the celebration. Kopech will take the hill. We honestly should go Garrett Cole. Because he's ready. But we're going we're gonna to throw Kopech out there. This is the lineup. It's pretty ridiculously good. Jose Ramirez will come off the bench. We are in L.A., so, there will be no DH. They go up early, 1-0. We still have not scored a run. Now it's 3-0. 
No runs have been scored on the side of Chicago. Only been two hits for our team. We're going to keep uh, Kopech. No, we're not. We're going to make a pitching change. We're going to bring in Chase and Shreve. We might lose here. As we still have yet to score a run, we're going to make another pitching change. We're going to bring in uh, Pagan, Emilio Pagan. He lets up a scoreless inning. We're going to pitch him again. Scoreless inning. And it is top nine. We're down by four. We're not coming back. We lose 4 nothing. All right. 3-3. Three, three. <laughs> Game seven of the World Series in LA. All right. Same deal. This is why we saved Garrett Cole. Just in case we lost. This is the lineup. Let's get it. one nothing early. Hold him. Hold him, Garrett Cole. Now 3-0. Chicago White Sox on three hits. Answer with another run. 4-0. The Dodgers have Vlad Jr. They score no runs again. And we get a few more hits. Do we leave Garrett Cole on the mound? He's pitching a one-hitter. We absolutely do. Let's give him more support. Garrett Cole with a one-hitter through eight. And he finishes. Garrett Cole allows one hit. Zero earned runs, and I meant to jump in. I'm stupid. Uh, however, the White Sox have won the World Series. That's going to do it for this rebuild. I really wanted to get us on the field, and I totally forgot. I totally forgot. But that's going to do it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. Subscribe if you're new. Take it easy.